Good evening, everyone. Time for another member update. I just wanted to apologize to everyone for not getting a video out recently and the pace been slowing down. I'm going to pick that up moving forward. But had a very big life change recently. My entire team got laid off. It's a very good thing because we have a fantastic severance package. I'm going to use this as an opportunity to move across the country and relocate back to where I'm originally from and uh, we'll get to be back with our family. So that's fantastic. It's been very crazy lately, and that's the news. Now, speaking of crazy, look at the Bitcoin chart. We're trading at 1558 on Poloniex, and you can see we're way, way above the price of gold now. Uh, we're bouncing around $3 at a time here, and uh, and it's just, uh, there's no end in sight. It's just going higher and higher. You can see the volume coming in on these new spikes up. Huge volume here. Uh, um, like a million dollars worth of buying right there. And it's still just going straight up. Now I heard an interesting uh, point that someone made today about the amount of Bitcoin that's out there and the amount of gold that's out there. And there's actually a thousand ounces of gold for every one Bitcoin. I think the numbers are like 6.5 billion ounces of gold and only 16 million Bitcoins. So that's crazy if you think about it. Can Bitcoin actually go to a price of a thousand times the, an ounce of gold? That's over a million dollars. Is it possible? Well, let's look at the crypto coin market cap. If you remember the last time... I talked about it. I I pointed out that I said that I think it's going to a hundred billion dollars, and you can see now we're at a total of forty billion dollars in market cap as cryptocurrencies. We've added ten billion dollars. My prediction was that we would reach a hundred billion dollar market cap for all the cryptos by the end of the year, and we that may actually end up being conservative. It is absolutely insane what's going on. So, it Bitcoin could be hit two thousand tomorrow. So here's a story on Zero Hedge I wanted to cover. Bitcoin, Ethereum hit new all-time highs amid buying frenzy, liquidity squeeze. The price of Bitcoin accelerated its recent exponential trend higher, soaring to daily all-time highs. Over the past few days, rising above 1,300 on Friday, then pushing 1,400 on Monday, and even above 1,500 on the second largest Bitcoin exchange, and was last trading just above 1,460. Now you know we're $100 higher than that. On Coinbase, amid a buying frenzy attributed to speculative investment across the cryptocurrency sector, coupled with liquidity problems at some exchanges which were having problems processing fiat based transactions. Assuming a price of $1,400, which is a rough estimate, as there's been a wide discrepancy across exchanges over the past week, would make Bitcoin one of the best performing currencies or assets depending on one's view of the year. Bitcoin has never traded above $1,300, $1,400 or $1,500 before Friday on the Hong Kong based exchange Bitfinex, the second largest cryptocurrency exchange. The price rose as high as $1,548 on Coindesk. The price crossed $1,400 on Monday and traded as high as $1,422. As the Wall Street Journal's Paul Vigna observes, Bitcoin has been struggling with the seemingly intractable internecine debate over network scaling, while similar projects have been drawing talent and investment dollars. But the price in 2017 has been generally rising and rising sharply, amid a confluence of factors. Not all of the factors ultimately may turn out to be positive. For now, however, holders of Bitcoin as well as various other cryptocurrencies, now here's another nod to the alts, and there's going to be some big winners going forward here as this money that has flowed into Bitcoin starts to flow into some of the other alts. Uh, I think what did we have a market cap of Ethereum of $7.29 billion dollars it wasn't too long ago when that was Bitcoin's market cap, and now that's Ethereum's market cap. They've been rejoicing at the move higher, expressing little concern about the positive negative implications. 
The space is definitely seeing more traction. Charles Hader, CEO of research site Crypto Compare, he pointed out, however, that a mixed bag of reasons was behind the weekend surge. One reason is a surge of investing across cryptocurrencies. Another are withdrawal problems plaguing specific exchanges with liquidity drying up and supplying supply and demand factors forcing the price higher. In addition to Bitcoin, Ethereum, Ripple, and other established cryptocurrencies have all soared in the past week amid a new trend called the Initial Coin Offering, or ICO, that has been growing in the sector. In an ICO startup, in an ICO, a startup issues its own Bitcoin-like asset, either as a straight-ahead investment or a token for use, with a service or product offering. There have been dozens of new coins minted and offered for sale, Wall Street Journal notes. Putting Bitcoin's recent gains in the dust has been Ethereum, the leading Bitcoin alternative, which traded above $80 on Monday, rising more than fourfold from under $20 as recently as the beginning of March. Even an alternative version of Ethereum called Ethereum Classic has been rising. On March 1st, it traded at $1.29. On Monday, it was trading at $6.59. Actually, uh, Ethereum, uh, I believe, is trading at $17 now, Ethereum Classic. Let's check it here. ETC. Oh, no. Okay. It's at $7.29. Ethereum has a more direct connection to the ICO trend than Bitcoin since many of the firms issuing these new coins are building products and services on the Ethereum network. In addition to ICO, another catalyst cited for the move higher is plain old supply and demand. While unclear if the result of a regulatory crackdown seen recently in Chinese-based exchanges, Hong Kong-based Bitfinex, and some other crypto exchanges in the industry have been dealing with liquidity and withdrawal issues in the past few weeks. Specifically, Bitfinex had trouble processing transactions after the Taiwanese banks that handle them started blocking requests. That's part of a trend where some banks are pulling out of sectors they deem risky. While we have more a more comprehensive write-up on the recent troubles at Bitfinex, a representative from the exchange confirmed to the Wall Street Journal that the inability of investors to withdraw Bitcoin is affecting the price. Perversely, instead of forcing the price of Bitcoin lower, the liquidity squeeze is forcing traders to offer higher bids to get their Bitcoin out, which is subsequently forcing the price up. That doesn't make a lot of sense, but if you think about what the Chinese did, they don't allow anyone to withdraw Bitcoin. So even though that suppressed the huge Chinese uh, market, because they were the biggest market and they were 98% of the market, even though that had the result of suppressing buying in China, it also had the result of the withdrawals not being able to come over to the West, which has taken over the lead, showing, as I pointed out at the time, that it was a supremely stupid move by the Chinese government to do, uh, rather than just let it trade. But so it does make some kind of backhanded sense that by locking these things up, that the supply of them is even smaller and that means more dollars chasing fewer bitcoins this is not healthy said vinnie lingham ceo of bitcoin based startup civic and a high profile trader for now however just like in the stock market traders at least those who are along the various cryptocurrencies are happy with the move higher if and when structural problems emerge and the price tumbles it may be a different story although that may not take place for a while because as nikkei reports more than 10 Japanese companies are launching exchanges for Bitcoin and other virtual currencies with an eye to tap growing demand after legal changes that make such trades cheaper and easier in the country. As discussed previously, starting July, Japan's consumption tax will no longer apply to purchases of virtual currencies. Exchanges in Japan have also been required since April to obtain a special license which has requirements for finances and asset management structures from the finance ministry. One example, SBI Holdings has set up SBI Virtual Currencies, an exchange between the yen and cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin and that of the Ethereum platform. The GMO Internet Group is also establishing its own company with plans to increase the number of digital currencies it trades based on demand. Kabu.com Securities and foreign exchange trader Money Partner Partners Group plan to enter the field as well. 
which means that just as the Chinese bubble frenzy in Bitcoin is fading, it may be replaced with a new one in which thousands of Mrs. Watanabe's traders shift their attention away from Forex markets and towards digital currencies. If the transition is seamless, there's no telling just how far this particular bubble can grow. Fascinating. Um, so it may just be the case that some of your dead cryptocurrencies that you invest in, like I have a couple of dead ones, I have Spot, I have Philosopher's Stone, I have a bunch of others. It may end up being some of these dead cryptocurrencies actually come back to life. There may also be a large number of new cryptocurrencies that absolutely explode. Um, the, the moves that have happened in Ethereum, Ethereum Classic, uh, they're really astounding. Uh, it's not just Bitcoin. You can see here, here's the Ethereum Classic chart on the same time frame. I actually didn't get as much of this move as I uh, expected to. I got a part of this move. And I think I bought in at $2.90. I bought in at one of these breakouts here. I think it was this one right here. And I ended up selling up in here. So huge, huge moves. You can see, as I pointed out before, Litecoin has had a huge move, running from $4 to above $17. Uh, Ripple had that huge move a while ago, and now it's consolidating. Uh, zero cash, another huge move. So they're all moving. Uh, it's just absolutely incredible. It m may very well be that those of you who just picked up a few, uh, say, Dash and threw them in a wallet or whatever, uh, you may end up being vindicated when some of these go a hundredfold or something like that. Uh, so again, uh, we're going to be moving across the country. Hopefully it won't cause too much of an interruption, um, but I'm going to try to get a lot more video uh, videos out uh, when I have more free time and uh, we're going to follow this Bitcoin thing. It's getting crazy right now. We'll talk to you next time.